Welcome to BulkReefSupply.com. This is an instructional video on how to install your 5-stage or 5-stage plus reverse osmosis deionization system. In this video we'll show how to install the unit on your kitchen sink, laundry tub, as well as underneath the sink. We'll also discuss when to change the filters and how to use the items concluded on the plus unit. For use on a laundry tub you would typically attach the unit using anchors or directly into studs making sure that it's securely on the wall because the unit is quite heavy once full of water. You may also bring the unit out as needed and simply set it on the counter. Installation of your RO system is extremely easy. There are only three hoses, the first of which is the red line, which is the water supply line and what you're going to hook up directly to the faucet. The next of which is your waste water line, which is the black line. This line carries all of the high TDS concentrate and you're going to want to simply slide the line straight down the drain and dispose of it. The blue line carries your newly filtered purified reverse osmosis water. First stage of setup is simply locate the end of the blue line which is your product water line and we're going to insert it directly into the deionization resin canister. The deionization canister is going to remove the small amount of contaminants that the reverse osmosis missed and produce zero TDS water suitable for aquarium use. You can take this line, attach it to a drum, a float valve, or a pressurized tank, anything that can store your newly purified water. Now that we have the product line set up, we're going to go ahead and take the waste water line, which is black, and we're just going to put it down the drain. Some people choose to save the waste water in bins outside to water plants with or their lawn. Now it's time to attach the water supply. Locate the aerator and unscrew it. We're going to replace it with a faucet diverter valve, which is an aerator that also has a small port on the side, which you can divert the water out. Once it's installed, take the red water supply line and slide it onto the barb fitting on the side of the faucet diverter valve. These valves come in several styles. This one has a black knob on the side. You can simply turn the knob to divert water out the red line on the side, and then when you're done, you can turn the knob again to make sure water is coming out of the faucet. If you need to attach your system to a garden hose or a laundry tub, you can use a little black adapter like this one. Simply use the push connect fitting on the other end and slide in your red water supply hose. The other end will simply screw directly on to a garden hose or laundry tub. Congratulations, you have completely installed your RO system and it's probably taking you less than five minutes. In this section we're going to show how to install an RO system underneath the sink with permanent connections to both the water supply as well as the drain. This install takes a few minutes longer but is worth the extra effort if you have the space. Before making a permanent install like this it's extremely important to turn off the water supply. You can often do this using the knob located on the water supply line underneath your sink. However if you can't shut it off there you'll need to locate the main water supply to your home. After shutting off the main valve you'll need to open up the faucet at the lowest point in your home which will let all the water drain out of your pipes. First step is to hook up the wastewater line permanently to your drain. We're going to use this drain saddle valve and attach it right onto the drain. We need to drill a small hole in the drain for the saddle valve. We'll use a power drill with a quarter inch bit and drill the hole a few inches above the trap. You can see the small hole we drilled right here. This is where we're going to put the saddle valve. Now we just clamp on the saddle valve. I like to use a smaller drill bit to align the holes before I tighten it down. Last step of installing a permanent drain connection is locating the black wastewater line and pushing it into the push connect fitting on the saddle valve. Next we're going to make a permanent connection to feed your RO system. Flexible tubing like this has become one of the more common tube attachments for water supplies. We're going to use an easy faucet connector by Murloc to attach your RO system to the flexible tubing. This is the easiest way to install a permanent water supply connection to your RO system. We include this with all of our non-economy units and I believe we're the only company in the reefing community to include this piece for free. First step is to remove the hose line so it's not attached to your water supply any longer. Then locate the thick clear washer and insert it into the top of your adapter. Now all you need to do is attach the adapter to the water supply valve and hose. Locate the red water supply line and insert it into the side of the adapter. It should look like this when you're finished. Instead of the flexible tubes, your sink may have rigid copper lines. Due to placement, some customers choose to attach it directly to their home's copper piping. To attach directly to copper pipe, 
We're going to use a self-piercing saddle valve like this one. Locate the seat of the saddle valve, which has two different sizes. Figure out which size is right for you and place it on the pipe. Then slide the rest of the C-clamp on. The unit should now look like this and you should use a wrench to crank down on the nut on the bottom to hold it securely in place. The last step is to attach our red water supply line to the saddle valve. The unit comes with three small parts. The small brass part we're not going to use because that's for rigid copper line. Go ahead and unscrew the brass nut and then slide it onto the hose. We'll then take the plastic ring and slide it on as well. Make sure the thin side of the bevel is closest to the end of the tube. Insert the brass insert and screw onto the saddle valve. You've now made a permanent attachment to your home's water supply. Now that it's properly installed, we'll twist the knob which will drive the pin down into the pipe and make your hole. When you have it all the way to the bottom, we're going to reverse the pin back out so water can flow through the hole. Please note that you have created a permanent hole in your copper pipe and don't install the saddle valve unless you are comfortable with this. The last step of setting up your system is locating the blue product water line and we're going to plug that into the deionization canister. Now locate the blue product water line coming out of the deionization can. This is your new purified water. You can now insert the line into a container of your choice, a float valve, or a pressurized tank. If you purchase the 5 stage plus system, it's going to come with three additional accessories. The first of which is a dual TDS meter. This is going to measure the TDS coming out of the RO membrane as well as the TDS coming out of the DI resin and will ultimately tell you the quality of the water that you are using. The water coming out of the DI resin should always be zero. If it isn't, your DI resin is probably depleted and needs to be changed. The system also comes with a pressure gauge, which does two things. First, the pressure will drop when the filters get clogged, so it will help you know when to change out your filters. It will also help you troubleshoot your system if you ever have problems, since most of them are related to water pressure. The plus unit also comes with a flush kit to bypass the flow restrictor on your membrane, this allows you to flush off deposits off the membrane surface and prolong its life. We recommend opening the valve for a minute or two before and after using the unit. In normal operation, it should be closed. The first stage of the unit is the sediment filter, which will need to be changed the most frequently. Change this filter when it turns brown or when you notice the pressure drop on your gauge. The next two stages are carbon blocks and should be replaced every 6 to 12 months. If you have a small tank and don't produce much water, you'd be in the 12 months range. First one should be the 5 micron CTO2 filter, and the last one should be the matrix plus one. The last filter is actually the one that does most of the work and is called the membrane. If properly maintained, your membrane should last around three years. If you should have any additional questions, please feel free to contact us. We do have members of our staff that have been certified by the Water Quality Association as certified water specialists and can help you with your install.